guys, welcome back to another video. So in today's Tuesday video, instead of doing a tutorial because I still don't really know quite what I want to do a tutorial on, and if you have any suggestions, leave a comment down below and, you know, I want to know what you guys want to see, so let me know. But for today's Tuesday video, I'm going to be kind of going over the things I use for acrylic painting, um, from paints to panels to everything that I use to paint with and that you might want to paint with, kind of like a art supply list for lack of a better term but it's just what I use and if you want to get started in acrylic painting that's definitely a good way to go is to see what other people use and to see where you want to base your painting style off of what you would like to use and what you think might work for you the best so let's get started and the first thing you're going to need is paint of course there are tons of different types of paints there are liquid ink acrylic paints there are acrylic gouache paints uh, let's see, there are matte paints, there are cheap and shiny paints, there are a little bit more expensive paints, there are heavy body paints, there are paints that work like an oil paint, there are high flow paints, and there are fluid paints, there are some really student quality paints. I mean, the sky's the limit when it comes to paints. So there's a ton of paints, and I have a ton of them. So, um... Why, I will go over these a little bit. So, these fluidy acrylics, so let's see, the Daily Rowney and the Golden Acrylics, they're more fluid, so that means I can use this one in a dropper, and it's going to be really, really fluid. It's literally just like ink, almost. Here, I don't know if you'll be able to hear this, but it's very liquid. So... That's just for more fluid types of painting. Then you've got your heavy body paints, which are really thick, and they're really nice for just impasto painting, or just if you wanna paint thickly. Then you've got your student quality paint that's pretty good. Um, it's, here, let me peel this nastiness off. It's actually just dried paint, but whatever. Anyway, it's pretty thin, and when it dries, it's shiny, so like gloss. So if you want it to be less glossy, you'll mix it with a medium, which we will talk about in a minute. But this is a student quality paint and great for beginners because you, you get a lot of bang for your buck. And uh, yeah, and they actually have some really good color payoff and it's really good for if you want to get to it and you don't want to spend a lot of money because you don't know if you like it or not, this is definitely a good brand. Then they've got this uh, Interactive Artist Acrylics, and um, these I think are student quality, but they're a little bit better. Um, I'm not quite sure on the price, but these are really cool because they actually do come with a medium, and I will talk about it later, that um, this particular brand will reactivate, so if it dries and you need to go back um, and then fix it, you can do so. Then you've got your matte paints, which dry matte, and I really like this Speedball acrylic paint because it's actually really thick and it dries matte so I don't have to mix any medium in with it. Very nice to use. Then you've got some cheap paints, so these De La Rowney Simply ones are just really, really cheap paints. They're not going to work as good as a more expensive brand just because they're student grade and they have more filler and stuff in them, but they're definitely good if you're just trying it out and you don't really want to spend the money. Next, we've got stuff like acrylic gouache, and what it is, is a more matte paint. It has acrylic polymers in it, but it's also matte and opaque and water resistant, so that means it's, it's like a gouache, but it's also like an acrylic, but I don't think you can lift it up like a gouache once it's dry. And then lastly, you've got your um, Golden Open. I don't know if any other brand makes something like this, but it's a slow drying acrylic, so it's more like a oil paint for acrylic, so you can work it for a little bit longer, and it, like I said, works like an oil paint. It's just not as thick and stuff. It works more like an acrylic. So, you've got a bunch of different types of paints. Um, so, now that we've talked about paints, we'll move on to painting surfaces. All right, now let's talk about surfaces to paint on. So there's kind of multiple things you can paint on. I mean, you can go the super cheap route, like paper, uh, they make a special kind of paper for it. And there is also really expensive, and you can buy like canvas and stretch it yourself. All right, so let's go over what I use. So first off, I use something called a Canva Paper by Canson, and what it is is exactly what it sounds like. It is canvas paper. It's made for acrylic and oils, and it's already primed, so you don't have to worry about priming it, and it's pretty thick. It's not for, like, super final pieces. 
it's not made for bunches of layers and stuff, but it is made for practice, and that's what I really like to use it for because I'm not a professional in acrylic painting, but I do need my practice, and I like to do small little doodles. I usually cut this sheet up into four, so there's like quarters, and then uh, I will paint on that. I have had no problems with it. I haven't had any like weird buckling or anything. I really like this stuff. Like I said, it's definitely good for practice. I know other brands make this too, but I just prefer the Canson one. Actually, I really like the B Canvas Skin Paper, and I will leave a card up in the corner up here for you to go see that. But I really like that stuff that's actually better than this. I just haven't had time to go out and buy it yet. Alright, the next thing we're going to talk about are panels. And I use panels. I don't have any canvases I can show you because I don't particularly like canvases, but I do like canvas panels. So... They come in two different kinds. They come in a smooth finish, so it's like literal, no tooth, no texture, it's just smooth. And this is my preferred thing to paint on. I'm not a big fan of texture. I like texture to a certain extent, but I feel like it gets frustrating for me because sometimes I can't get it in little crevices, and then I just get really frustrated. So, I really like using the smooth. This is the um, ampersand artist panel for oils and acrylics, and it's, you know, primed and all that stuff, and it's pretty thin, and you probably would have to frame it in something to hang it up, but that's okay. They don't really weigh that much either. They're pretty light. I usually use the Speedball Gesso board, um, but I wanted to show you this one, just because, show you there's more out there than just the Speedball one. Speedball's my favorite. I do like this one, though. I've used it, and I didn't have any problems with it. It was really fun to use. So the next kind of panel I'm going to show you is a textured panel, and I don't know if you'll be able to tell that it's textured or not, but it is pretty textured, and it's kind of like a canvas, but it's a panel, as you can see on the back here, and they're really lightweight. I have a lot of fun using these. I did use this in an oil painting. They're already primed, so you don't have to worry about priming that, but you can if you want, and I really like using that. Like I said, there are more options out there. I mean, you can stretch your own canvas. You can buy pre-stretched canvases over, like, bars and stuff. Like I said, I just prefer panels. They're easy. They're, they fit, like, in more spaces because I don't have a lot of space to store things. So, basically, this is what I use. All right, next thing we need to talk about are paintbrushes because you can't paint without paintbrushes. Well, I suppose you can. You can use your fingers. Actually, you can use whatever you want, but paintbrushes are the more practical way to go. All right, so I have a bunch of paintbrushes. A bunch. I have large ones. I have small ones. I mean, the list goes on, and I actually have them separated into bigger and smaller brushes. Um, actually, and I, I have some reviews up here I'll show you in the cards, but um, I really prefer using the My Artscape brushes. They have long-handled brushes, they have short-handled brushes, and then they have their mini detail brushes, and I use them all the time. But another thing I do like to use are the Bergen brand um, Princeton Real Value kinds from Jerry's Artorama. Um, they're really good. And if you are looking for something to use and you don't really want to worry about messing them up but they're not going to shed on you and stuff, I would really recommend the Princeton Real Value ones because they come in a pack for like $5. And I haven't had any problems, no shedding, nothing, and I still have almost every single brush that I bought. I, the only ones I did, don't still have are the ones I messed up by accident because I didn't know certain things about painting before I started painting. So, like I said, you're going to want a variety of brushes. I mean, they come in... They come in dagger kinds, they come in filberts, they come in flats and brights, which are just flat. Uh, then there are rounds. I use mainly synthetic hairs, but there are real hair brushes, like this calligraphy butt brush right here. Uh, I think I have another one somewhere, but I'm not quite sure. Um, I mean, there's fan brushes, which are really cool. I mean, there the list goes on. There's a giant mop brush, this one has like fuzzies in it. But anyway, like I was saying, you can use these for a variety of things and you can get different effects. And uh, here's hog hair brush too. I use this for um, getting things up if I messed up or something. So anyway, these are the brushes that I generally use. Like I said, I buy multiple, multiple kinds of brushes just to kind of understand how each of them works. My favorite has to be the filbert, only because it's it's oval, but then if you get it wet, it kind of goes to a point, and it's really cool, and it definitely works for all of my needs. So, these are the kind of brushes I use. Alright, now that you've got your brushes, you're gonna kind of want something to clean with. So, uh, I have a couple of suggestions. I have the Master's Brush Cleaner, and I really like this stuff. 
Um, it's technically a three-in-one. It cleans oil paint, a watercolor paint, acrylic. It says it cleans stains. And what you do is you open it up and you can kind of swirl your brush in there, get it lathered up, and then rinse it out and kind of do it a couple times until all the paint is out of your brush. And it helps condition and restore your brush. Now, this all there is also the Mona Lisa Pink Soap, and I really like this just for quick cleans. Um, this is just a really small bottle. They sell humongous bottles of this. But I just kind of pop it open, pour a little bit on my brush, not very much, and I kind of lather it in with my, the palm of my hand, and then it gets it out, and it makes it very soft, and I have had no problems. The next thing I want to talk to you guys about is the Mona Lisa Power Wash, and I also did a demo on the three pack that I'm going to be showing you, uh, so I'll leave a card up here in the corner, but um, I... I really, really like this stuff. It's for synthetic brushes only, so you don't want to use your natural hair brushes on it, but what you do is if you have like a brush you accidentally left in some paint or you didn't rinse it off completely and it got like hard and crusty, what you want to do is put it in this and kind of work it around a little bit and then it'll be like new. It's great. It like dissolves the paint. really like this stuff. And then the third thing that comes in the set is this brush shaper and it's basically a restorer what you do is you open it up here I'll open it up for you guys and it's very liquidy and what you want to do is dip your brush in it if it's like not pointy anymore or it's kind of a little you know frayed out and stuff what you want to do is put it in there and kind of shape the brush back to the way you want it and let it dry and voila it kind of fixes it for you so definitely a nice thing to have so these are the things you're gonna want if you have brushes that you want to keep uh, happy and healthy. So, something I didn't talk about earlier that I should have when I mentioned the paint is you're going to want to store your paint in something, and I have these. They're little bitty one ounce cups uh, with lids, and I just kind of, if I'm making a skin tone or something, what I do is just kind of pour it and mix it in there, and then I use this lid, and I cap it, and it stays good for weeks. So it's definitely a really handy thing to have. Um, you can use anything really for this. Um, I just use these plastic cups, but you can use anything from makeup jars to random Tupperware containers. I mean, the list is endless. If it has a lid and it will keep it dry and away from the air, then it's great. All right, we've talked about brushes and paints and cleaning stuff. Next, we need to talk about palettes because you've got to kind of use your, you don't want to use your paints from the tube. You want to mix them. I have a couple of things I want to suggest to you. First is the Stay Wet Palette by Masterson. I really like this brand. And what it is, is I also have a review for this. I will link it. Um, well, if I can get it open. <laughs> what it is, is a palette, and there is a sponge down in here, and what you do is you get it wet. There's full instructions, and I list them in the video, so I'm not going to, like, talk all about it. But you get this wet, basically, and you soak this paper, and then it is free. It keeps your paints wet. And you can put the lid on, it keeps the air from getting in there, and then you don't have to worry about your paints drying out. And they will last up to, I think, a week, if I'm not mistaken. And I really like this one. And the plus side is, this stuff may stain, but you can use it over and over and over again, so you don't have to keep buying papers. And both sides are usable, so that is really cool, too. So if you want to store your paints, if you're working on a painting for a while, this is a really good option. And if you're not working on a painting for a while, and you just want a palette, I highly recommend to you just the plain old styrofoam plates. That's exactly what I use for any painting that does not take me more than a day. And uh, they're definitely really awesome to have around. I mean, they're cheap. Uh, you can store them pretty easily. And they throw awayable. You don't have to feel bad about it. And yeah, I know it's kind of the dumbest thing, but I really like using these. All right, next thing you are going to want to get, you know, some palette knives. Uh, to mix your paint with. I have both the cheap plastic ones that you can buy for like three dollars at Walmart and I also have this Liquitex Freestyle which is a metal one and as you can see it is very well loved. Um, I use it a lot. I actually use both of these a lot and they're just really ideal for mixing your paints around so you don't have to like get your brush in it and then get the paint up to the ferrule and then it's like crusty and you don't want that. So you want to use a palette knife for that. Um, honestly, I would recommend the plastic ones to start out with only because the metal ones are really expensive, but the plastic ones work really well. I've not had a single problem with them and they're super cheap, so definitely something you want to think about if you're trying to get into acrylic painting, but you don't know if you're going to be serious or not about it, so you should probably get the plastic ones first, so you can kind of test them out. Next thing I want to talk about are mediums. Now, they have so many mediums, and I'm not going to be able to show you all of them, but there is crackle paste that makes your paints crackle. 
there is gesso, which isn't really a medium, it's more of a thing you put on your canvas, but there's gesso, um, let's see, there's light molding paste so you can make some textures on your canvas, um, there is clear tar gel, and I am pretty sure this is supposed to make your paints more fluid, then there's matte medium, and this is the holy grail of all mediums that I use. I use matte medium for everything, I use it for an adhesive, I use it to kind of prepare the ground of my smooth panels for uh, painting, I use it to kind of set a layer, like if I've transferred something and then I need to set it, I put a layer of this over, actually sometimes a couple layers, um, I use it to mix with my paints to make them more matte, they also have gloss medium, so if you want it shiny, that's perfectly fine too, but I like matte medium just because I like my paintings more matte. So these are only a few mediums. I mean, there are so many out there. There is airbrush medium. There is um, fiber paste. I mean, I think there's pumice gel where it, you can make it like sandy. Uh, glass bead gel. So many things. These are the only ones I wanted to show you right now just because I really use these a lot. Actually, I lied. I have not used these two yet, but I do use these three a lot. I just kind of wanted to show you that there's other things out there. So those are mediums. Like I said, they come in different brands, different sizes, different types, different colors even, and it's definitely a really cool thing to have around if you are needing to change something up, you know, make a different texture, make it more matte, more glossy, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, mediums, those are things. All right, next up is something kind of odd, but definitely useful to know. Uh, isopropyl alcohol and Q-tips. If you made a boo-boo in your painting and you want to fix it, what you do is put a Q-tip in some alcohol and kind of dissolve away at it very, very lightly because you don't want to ruin your painting, but um, you can kind of clean up some edges with that and it's really handy to have around, especially if you need to fix something pronto. So I really, I use these a lot in my paintings because I mess up a lot, a lot more than I would like to admit. But anyway, this is definitely a handy little thing to have around, and this stuff is super cheap. I mean, you probably have Q-tips in your cabinet, in your bathroom, and you probably have out rubbing alcohol too. I mean, let's be honest. So, and if you don't, these things are super cheap to go out and buy. So, this is kind of turning into a super cheap acrylic thing, but it, I mean, to, if you're starting out, you're going to want cheaper stuff just so you know whether you're going to like this stuff or not. Alright, next up, you're going to want, if you're a painter like I am anyway, and you sketch something before you want to put it on your panel or canvas or whatever, you're going to want some transfer paper. Now this is huge and it's not really going to fit in the whole video frame, but this is a humongous roll of transfer paper uh, by Jack Richardson Company. It's uh, 24 by 24, so 24 inches by 24 feet, and it is just the graphic color they make a ton of colors of gra or transfer paper um, they make like white I think they make like blue and red and I don't know I know they make graphite and that's what I mainly use I do wish I had white and I think that's the next color I'm gonna buy but I do have gray and it works just fine for me and what you do with this is you put it underneath whatever you're gonna transfer with the darker side down and you just draw right over what you had lined up earlier and it'll transfer it down onto whatever surface you want it to be on. So I have this and then I have some cheap eBay brand. I don't even know where this came from, which is from eBay. Uh, I really didn't like this stuff only because it came up too much, uh, so I would suggest getting a better brand of it. Um, this is something you don't really want to cheap out on because if you are painting and it smears, it's not going to look good. So just a word of advice. Nextly, we're going to want some tape and you may not want tape. I use tape to kind of mark off the borders of my painting so they'll have like a mat, uh, you know, like the white border. Um, and I also, you can use them for making straight lines so you can put the tape down and then paint over and then peel the tape up and voila, you've got a straight line. So um, I have two different types of tape. I have masking tape and I have painter's tape. Painter's tape is a lot easier on your canvas panels whereas masking tape is super duper sticky, especially the artist stuff. Um, so. These are definitely things you want to have around, though, if you want to, you know, make a border around your painting or if you want to make straight lines. Um, so, yeah. Or if you just want something fun to play with. Next thing you're going to want is, like, the holy grail of every item ever that you need for painting. Paper towels. You will probably go through a ton of paper towels. I literally have just a big old roll sitting right on my desk. Um, and I use this for cleaning my brushes off, getting some water off my brushes, getting paint off my palette knives, cleaning up little bitty messes, um, dabbing at my 
um, painting, uh, making clouds. I even use it for that. So paper towels are really handy to have around. I mean, you never know what you're going to use them for. Next up, this is kind of funny, but you are going to want maybe an apron of some kind to keep your clothes, you know, not dirty. So I have this one I got from Loot Crate and it says Los Pollos Hermanos and it is from Breaking Bad. But I mean, you can use whatever you have. Uh, I have use this a couple times when I paint just because I don't want to get things on my clothing, but you don't have to. I mean, if you want painted clothes, that is cool too because I still somehow always end up to paint my clothes even with this on. So that is definitely a bonus to have around if you don't want to get painted clothes. And I believe the last thing I have to show you guys is uh, paint buckets. I have a couple of paint buckets here. This one actually has water in it. Um, this one is like, it has three sections and place to put your brushes to dry. Um, it also has a place for your paper towel. I have not used this section. I actually used to store my brushes in there. Now they're stored in just like a random cotton candy cup and a pencil holder because I don't have anything better for that. But uh, I fill these two sides and I use one for clean and one for dirty water. They're both clean at the moment, or at least they should be. And yeah. And then this one, I really like this one. I have not used it quite yet. But what you do is you put water in this bottom part and it has this little grate, I don't know if you can see that, and you can kind of get your brushes clean on that and then you can stick them, here I will show you, you can stick them in this little coil and it holds your brushes uh, so they're not touching the bottom so you're not bending your bristles but they're also staying in the water if you're acrylic painting or just drying um, so you can use it as a drying mechanism as well so they can dry upside down without water getting into the ferrule so it's really cool I do like how this is made it's a very unique looking thing but it is very handy to have around as far as I can tell, I think I have covered everything. I really hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button. It really helps me out a lot. Also, you can follow me on DeviantArt, Pagey World, Twitter, and Instagram. All of my links are down in the description below. And don't forget to subscribe to join our cute little artist family if you haven't already. And until next time, guys, toodaloo!